I don't know how they did it. All I know is they did it. I don't think anybody knows how they did it. For ages, Egypt has been like a giant treasure chest full of ancient wonders waiting to be found, where history blends appropriately with today. Every speck of sand here whispers the possibility of uncovering something remarkable. But what these explorers found went beyond anyone's imagination. They stumbled upon a tomb belonging to a queen who lived 800,000 years ago. A queen whose story was hidden in mystery, her identity lost over time. Who was this queen? What secrets does her ancient tomb hold? Join us as we uncover the incredible discovery made by scientists in Egypt. On January 25, 2011, the streets of Cairo erupted with protesters, demanding the end of President Hosni Mubarak's 30-year rule. Amid the chaos and global attention focused on the turmoil above, a remarkable discovery was quietly unfolding far below the surface. Deep in the ancient, dusty tunnels of the Valley of the Kings, a team of archaeologists led by Suzanne Bickel from the University of Basel in Switzerland was on the brink of uncovering one of the most significant archaeological finds of the century. The team had stumbled upon the top of a large round stone at the eastern end of the valley. Initially, they thought it might be just the top of an abandoned shaft. However, the stone was part of something much more extraordinary. The archaeologists had uncovered the entrance to a previously unknown tomb, later identified as KV-64. This was a breakthrough, as the Valley of the Kings, a royal burial ground for pharaohs and nobles, had not seen such a significant discovery in decades. Before they could explore further, they had to navigate Egypt's strict regulations for archaeological discoveries. They carefully covered the stone with a locked iron door, informed the Egyptian authorities, and applied for the necessary permits to continue their excavation. A year after receiving the green light to dig, Bickel returned to the remote site, this time with a robust team of around two dozen experts and laborers. Among them were Elena Paula Groth, a distinguished field director from the University of Basel, and Egyptian inspector Ali Rita. Local workers whose families had lived in the area for generations also joined the team. The atmosphere buzzed with anticipation as they prepared for the careful task ahead. Each member took turns lying on the ground, pressing their heads against the cool shaft wall and reaching through a small hole next to the capstone to take photographs. The images they captured were nothing short of astonishing revealing the unmistakable presence of an ancient tomb. This tomb, untouched for millennia, held secrets of a long-lost era. Amidst the debris inside the tomb rested a dusty black coffin, a remarkable find. It was carefully carved from plane tree wood and adorned with large, vibrant yellow symbols that stood out boldly on its sides and top. The craftsmanship was wonderful, and Bickel, who had seen numerous Egyptian artifacts in her career, declared that she had never encountered a coffin in such extraordinary condition. The team also discovered fragments of pottery made from Nile silt and pieces of plaster, materials commonly used by ancient Egyptians to seal tomb entrances. These findings, combined with the dating of nearby sites, indicated that the tomb was likely over 3,000 years old, dating back to the New Kingdom period, a time when pharaohs like Ramses II and Tutankhamun ruled Egypt. The symbols reveal that the tomb belongs to a woman named Namus Bastet. Experts in ancient Egyptian history, known as Egyptologists, believe she was a high-ranking lady associated with the Amun Temple. Nemes Bastet lived during a time when Egypt was a hub of cultural and religious activity, making her burial site particularly captivating. For years, people have been saying that there is nothing new. To discover in the Valley of the Kings, this belief dates back to the time they started digging there. Giovanni Belzoni, an antiquarian from Venice, thought he had uncovered the last of the tombs in the valley during his expedition in 1817. About a century later, another excavator named Theodore Davis also believed he had finished exploring the valley just before the famous tomb of Tutankhamun was discovered. The Valley of the Kings has long been a treasure collection of ancient wonders. During the New Kingdom period, it served as the burial ground for pharaohs and powerful nobles from the 16th to the 11th century BCE. Each tomb tells a story of the individual buried within and the society that built it. These tombs are often decorated with detailed wall paintings and inscriptions, 
that provide insights into the religious beliefs and daily life of ancient Egyptians. Fortunately, a growing number of people now think there are still many hidden treasures waiting to be found in the Valley of the Kings, the Nile Delta, and across Egypt. Modern technology, such as ground-penetrating radar and 3D mapping, has revolutionized the way archaeologists search for and study ancient sites. These advancements have led to the discovery of previously hidden chambers and artifacts, suggesting that the valley still holds many secrets. Discoveries like Nemas's Bastet's tomb continue to spark interest in these ancient mysteries. The artifacts found within her tomb, although simple, can provide valuable information about the burial practices and daily life of the upper class in ancient Egypt. Items such as pottery, jewelry, and amulets often hold symbolic meaning and were believed to protect and provide for the deceased in the afterlife. It is fascinating to see that even a wealthy woman from this period was buried with rather simple belongings. Bickle notes that Namus's plain wooden coffin and basic steel tools stand in stark contrast to the luxurious pottery, furniture, and food found in older tombs. Though her wooden coffin was quite costly, it lacked the complex inner, coffins seen in other similar burials. Could this be the resting place of an incredibly ancient queen? The discovery of Namus' coffin has caused quite a stir among Egyptologists. Unlike the elaborate gold and jewel-encrusted sarcophagi of well-known pharaohs like Tutankhamun, Namus's burial suggests a different social status, or possibly an even older time. Wooden coffins were typically used for those who could not afford stone, yet the craftsmanship indicates she was still an important figure. After reinforcing the coffin and securing the mummy, Bickle's team transported it across the Nile to Luxor. There, a thorough investigation is currently underway to uncover the true identity of this mysterious woman. Advanced imaging techniques, including CT scans and 3D reconstructions, are being used to study the mummy without damaging it. DNA analysis may provide clues about her lineage, potentially linking her to known royal families or revealing previously unknown connections. With significant insights into the controversial finds of ancient Egypt, people often find that the simplest tombs with wooden tombs turn out to be the oldest. Additionally, their symbols are frequently more wonderful in detail. Some experts believe that earlier periods focused more on the quality of descriptions rather than the excess of burial goods. Could this be the discovery of an original burial with the simple signs falsely claiming the identity of the occupant to conceal the tomb's true ancient origins? Some perimeter scientists suggest that Egyptian antiquities might be hiding a sacred truth. They believe that the Egyptians merely copied the original builders of the pyramids, taking over their structures after they were already constructed. Years later, people continue to uncover fascinating evidence supporting these claims in various forms. In 1995, a remarkable discovery was made under Giza by a team led by Kent Weeks. They unearthed over 100 underground chambers, shedding new light on the ancient site. Some alternative researchers propose that the history of ancient Egypt might be entirely different from the official narrative. According to these researchers, the inhabitants of the Pharaonic Empire were not the original builders of the pyramids. Instead, they believe the Egyptians simply copied the grand structures created by an earlier unknown civilization. But how credible are these claims? Is there any substantial evidence to back them up? Supporters of this theory often point to the significant erosion patterns found on the pyramids, and most notably, the Sphinx. They argue that the heavy rainfall that caused these erosion marks suggests that the Stone Guardian is much older than mainstream experts believe. Detailed studies of past rainfall patterns indicate that the erosion does not match the presumable period when the pyramids and the Sphinx were built. Remarkably, some theorists suggest that these structures could be as old as 800,000 years. However, this idea presents a major challenge. The current understanding indicates that Homo sapiens have only been around for about 300,000 years, making it seemingly impossible for humans to have constructed these monuments at such an ancient time. If these claims hold any truth, they would radically change the understanding of human history and ancient civilizations. The possibility that an advanced society predating known human history might have existed is both thrilling and bewildering, inviting people to rethink the origins of some of the world's most iconic structures. What's remarkable 
is that these chambers show evidence of multiple flash flooding events involving seawater throughout the ages, suggesting a complex history people are only beginning to understand. What adds to the mystery is the absence of any written records detailing the construction of these monuments. Despite extensive code writings found in ancient Egypt, there's no mention of how the pyramids or the Sphinx were built. This interesting gap in historical records sparks curiosity. Surprisingly, more hasn't been shared about such a significant find, leaving people to wonder about the implications of this discovery. Could it be a groundbreaking but controversial revelation? Delving into Kulab, a site that had been explored extensively, apart from its massive ancient wall surrounding the entrance. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. Subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos that are uploaded every day. All right, let's keep rolling. Kulab's location atop a naturally formed hill challenges previous assumptions made by academia. This site holds layers of history waiting to be uncovered, potentially reshaping the understanding of the past. Upon exploring this site, the construction of the wall, upon closer examination, revealed a monumental feat of human labor and engineering. Yet what lay beyond this formidable barrier surpassed mere natural formation. It was discovered that the area behind the fortress had been intentionally filled with earth, shaping a plateau. This revelation challenged the long-held beliefs of experts who had overlooked the possibility of human intervention in its formation. Moreover, the plateau wasn't just a random occurrence, but a deliberate creation. Geologists, academics, and archaeologists had previously missed the signs of deliberate human activity in shaping the landscape. What became apparent was not only the painstaking creation of the plateau to support the fortress, but also the ingenious design of its entrances. These passageways proved the remarkable intellect of the builders, allowing access to the site. However, as invaders attempted to breach the fortress, they faced not only the challenge of narrow passages, but also strategic vulnerabilities. Furthermore, the entrances weren't mere openings, but intricately designed pathways. Some were wide enough to deceive invaders into a false sense of security, only to gradually narrow down, exposing them to attacks from above and from both sides as they advanced towards the mansion itself. This strategic design made infiltration easier, but more possible for larger groups. Deep within a complex cave system at the site, accessible only after descending a staggering 800 meters underground, lies a hidden burial chamber. This chamber wasn't just a resting place, it was carefully crafted to ensure the preservation of these individuals' remains for centuries. Moreover, its construction aimed to thwart tomb raiders who have destroyed countless burial sites across history and various cultures. Among the treasures unearthed are wooden idols adorned with detailed carvings and treated with advanced preservation techniques lost to time. These artifacts have defied the ravages of time and climate, offering tantalizing clues to the advanced skills of the ancient inhabitants. However, what sets this discovery apart are the mummies found within the chamber. Unlike anything seen before, these mummies are remarkably intact, with intricate facial features and well-preserved clothing hinting at a sophisticated culture. Their presence challenges existing theories about the site's creators and promises to unravel one of archaeology's greatest mysteries. Thankfully, Despite the widespread looting of ancient tombs over the years, this burial chamber remained concealed and untouched until now, holding the potential to rewrite history books. Even though mummies were absent, archaeologist Warren Church remained determined to unlock the secrets of Los Pachucos. For nearly two decades, he delved into his work, driven by the mystery surrounding the site. Los Pachucos, a marvel of ancient engineering, stood as a fortress against time. Its construction reflected tremendous effort and ingenuity. The Cloud People, or Chachapoya, as called by the Incas, inhabited these ruins which dotted the landscape of Peru. Despite the challenges, they thrived until the arrival of the Spanish, but their downfall was hastened by the introduction of smallpox. What makes the Cloud People exciting is not just their resilience, but also their cultural expressions. They left no written records, but adorned their environment with intricate stone carvings illustrating orchids, butterflies, and jaguars, 
offering glimpses into their beliefs and surroundings. Church's discoveries went beyond the surface. He uncovered evidence of the Chachapoyas' agricultural skill, carving. Terraces into steep slopes for farming, showcasing their adaptation to the environment. In a remarkable find within the site's burial chamber, Church unearthed mummies revealing startling details. Contrary to expectations, these mummies had European features, fair skin and blonde hair. This discovery raised questions about the origins and interactions of ancient peoples across continents, hinting at possible transoceanic connections. Church described these mummies as some of the most captivating relics from the past he had ever encountered. Were these ancient mummies the original architects of this breathtaking site, or were they newcomers like the Incas, settling here later? How they arrived in the Peruvian hills and became custodians of this remarkable place remains one of history's interesting puzzles. Yet scattered across the globe, mummies with features resembling Europeans have been unearthed. Does this tantalizingly suggest the existence of a once great civilization, like the legendary Atlanteans, sharing their wisdom worldwide before some explosive event. Regardless of their origins, the research conducted by the church is truly commendable, and these discoveries are endlessly fascinating. In the year 1835, amidst the fields of Kent, UK, an ordinary laborer was going about his daily work when his shovel struck the ground in just the right spot, revealing something extraordinary. As his shovel made contact with the earth, it seemed to vanish into the ground, exposing a hidden doorway to an underground realm unknown to the surface world. The laborer soon realized he had stumbled upon the entrance to a network of mysterious caverns lying beneath the Earth's surface, invisible from above. News of this astonishing find quickly spread like wildfire, igniting curiosity in everyone who heard about it. Eager to unveil the secrets hidden below, a local school teacher bravely volunteered his son, Joshua, to embark on a daring journey into the depths below. He described a mesmerizing sight, intricate, runes etched into stones and adorned with millions of meticulously arranged seashells, forming a breathtaking mosaic. Initially met with skepticism, his claims were doubted by many. However, when the entrance was widened, allowing curious onlookers to behold the spectacle with their own eyes, their skepticism transformed into awe as they beheld the stunning beauty of the shell-laden chamber. Today, this marvel is renowned as the Shell Grotto of Margate. Yet despite its fame, the enigma surrounding its origins and purpose persists. Covering nearly every surface, from walls to ceilings, the mosaic spans approximately 190 square meters and comprises an estimated 4,600,000 shells. These shells, carefully selected for their color and shape, create an otherworldly ambiance within the grotto. Scholars have ventured numerous theories to unravel the mystery of its creation. Some speculate it to be a whimsical project of a wealthy individual during the 18th or 19th century, while others propose it to be a relic of prehistoric times, possibly serving as an astronomical calendar or holding ties to the secretive Knights Templar. What adds to the interest is the absence of scientific dating. Despite its fame, the Shell Grotto of Margate remains untouched by modern scientific analysis, leaving its age and purpose shrouded in mystery. This absence of concrete evidence only adds to its mystery, inviting further speculation and wonder. Delving deeper into the mosaic itself it reveals a fascinating array of shell varieties, while local shells like mussels, cockles, limpets, scallops, and oysters dominate the artwork. It is the flat winkle that forms the majority of the background infill between the intricate designs. This particular shell's prevalence hints at a deliberate choice, perhaps suggesting a symbolic or practical significance to its use within the mosaic. However, this shell is an exceedingly rare find, scarcely seen in local areas. It likely washed up on shores located to the west of Southampton, carried by ocean currents. The shell grotto, although stunning, remains relatively obscure in public. Awareness. Further scientific inquiry is essential to unlock the secrets behind its remarkable construction. Nestled within Laos, a landlocked country in Southeast Asia, lies one of the most mysterious archaeological sites known to humanity. Over the years, researchers have delved into countless newspaper archives, sifted through oral histories, and even recovered stolen remains of an ancient human species 
believed to be much larger than modern humans. Moreover, across various parts of the world, there are intriguing discoveries of ancient giant artifacts. These artifacts include tools, utensils, and massive structures that seem impractical for people of our stature today. They hint at the existence of a race of beings much larger than us, with capabilities beyond our understanding. Adding to the mystery, our archaeological site in Laos stands as a compelling piece of evidence possibly left behind by this ancient race of giants. One of the most intriguing mysteries of the ancient site known as the Plain of Jars revolves around the enigmatic figure called the Frogman. This vast area located in Laos is scattered with thousands of giant stone jars, each crafted on such a grand scale that they seem impractical for any modern human use. The Plain of Jars spans across Xiang Kuang Plateau and is divided into several sites, with the largest containing over 400 jars. Some of these jars reach up to three meters in height and can weigh several tons. The original purpose of these stone jars, situated in remote and often rugged locations, remains a baffling question. Were they made by our distant ancestors? This is a mystery that has stumped modern scholars and might never be fully explained. Among the hundreds of jars, all but one are completely undecorated. Only one jar stands out, adorned with the image of a frogman. This unique jar adds to the intrigue, suggesting a possible cultural or ritualistic significance that has yet to be understood. The image of the frogman could symbolize a deity, a mythological creature, or a clan emblem, but its exact meaning remains a mystery. According to scholars, these aqua jars date back to the Iron Age, around 500 BC, but some evidence suggests they could be even older. Archaeological excavations have uncovered human remains, beads, and ceramics near some jars, indicating that the sites may have been used for burial practices. The presence of bones and artifacts hints at complex rituals and beliefs surrounding death and the afterlife, further deepening the mystery of the jar's purpose. Local legends add another layer of fascination to the Plain of Jars. One popular myth claims that the jars were created by a race of giants who used them to brew and store large quantities of rice wine to celebrate a great victory in battle. Another tale suggests that the jars were used to collect monsoon rainwater for travelers and traders. The Plain of Jars is undeniably one of the most significant prehistoric sites in Southeast Asia, holding secrets that have yet to be uncovered. This remarkable site undoubtedly deserves more attention and research to uncover its ancient mysteries. Who created these enormous jars? Why were they made in such impractical sizes? Where did the stones come from? And how were they transported to their final resting places high on these plateaus? Could they have been made by a race of giants? And who is our mysterious Frogman character? Was this single image a signature left by the original makers of these giant jars? Unfortunately, we may never know the answers. In Siberia, archaeologists discovered a bracelet that dates back to a time modern science attributes to the Denisovan species of early humans. This remarkable bracelet, confirmed by scientists to be 40,000 years old, is the oldest piece of jewelry ever found. The bracelet was unearthed at a site now known as Denisova Cave in the Altai region of Siberia in 2008. After detailed analysis, Russian experts confirmed the bracelet's age and authenticity. Intriguingly, the bracelet is made of chlorite, a stone not found near the cave, indicating that the Denisovans either traveled long distances or traded with other groups to obtain the material. The craftsmanship of the bracelet is astonishing, featuring a drilled hole made with ink advanced tools, suggesting that the Denisovans had more sophisticated technology than previously thought. Scientists have concluded that this intricate piece of jewelry must have been made by the Denisovans, an extinct species of humans. This discovery reveals that they were far more advanced than we had ever realized. The Denisova cave has also yielded other artifacts, including a well-preserved pinky bone and teeth, which have provided crucial DNA evidence. This evidence has helped scientists understand more about the Denisovans and their relation to modern humans and Neanderthals. The Denisovans' advanced skills in jewelry making imply they had knowledge of techniques and tools that were quite sophisticated for their time. The bracelet's polished surface and the precision of the drilled hole suggest that they had developed a form of technology that was previously unknown to modern science. These findings challenge our understanding of prehistoric human capabilities 
and hint at a complex and interconnected prehistoric world. Further examination of the intricate bracelet unearthed perplexing revelations, sending ripples through the academic community. Originally presumed to be a product of natural wear and tear, the discovery of a carefully crafted drill hole challenged the prevailing narrative. The precision of the hole suggested not erosion, but the deliberate hand of an ancient artisan, wielding what can only be described as a sophisticated jeweler's tool. Dr. Derek Yanko, in his illuminating discourse within the pages of Novice Obesity magazine, detailed the remarkable dimensions of the bracelet's fragments. Measuring 2.7 centimeters in width and 0.9 centimeters in thickness, each fragment bore witness to the artisan's mastery. However, it was the presence of a perfectly drilled hole, approximately 0.8 centimeters in diameter, nestled near a fracture, that captured the imagination of scholars. Upon meticulous analysis, scientists unraveled further clues embedded within the artifact. The drill hole's characteristics hinted at a manufacturing process far beyond the era's technological capabilities. With the revelation that the drill bit rotated at a consistently high speed, displaying minimal fluctuations, experts were left awestruck. It was a testament to the ingenuity of ancient craftsmanship, suggesting the employment of advanced implements ahead of their time. As whispers of this archaeological marvel spread, speculation ran rampant within scholarly circles. The mystery surrounding the identity of the bracelet's creator ignited a fervent debate, leaving even the most seasoned researchers at a loss for concrete answers. The enigma persisted, beckoning those untethered by the constraints of conventional academia to delve into the realms of speculation and wonder. Outro, what are your thoughts about these scientists found in Egypt? Let us have your opinions in the comment below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.